I've encountered many people who have been rather confused on which Ultrabook laptop to purchase, mostly being stuck in deciding between the 13-inch MacBook Pro and the 13-inch MacBook Air. This video should make that decision easier, as I will break down the differences between these two. Which one of these is best for you? The 13-inch MacBook Pro or the 13-inch MacBook Air? Let's find out. Now, here's a small disclaimer. I am comparing the 2015 model of the 13-inch MacBook Pro to the latest version of the MacBook Air because of the 2016 version being so different from the MacBook Air. And even though they are part of the same Ultrabook class of laptops, it still feels like a better laptop for a pretty different audience. The 2015 version of each respective model have the most in common. So without further delay, let's begin. First is the 13-inch MacBook Air. This is the thinnest and lightest laptop Apple used to make before the 12-inch MacBook. It starts off being thick around the hinge and gets thinner as you make your way towards the lid. It's made out of aluminum for the exception of the hinge. The keyboard is very nice and clicky. I personally think it's great for first typing and it also has a very subtle backlight. A trackpad has a great texture to it. It doesn't have a haptic engine, but I actually prefer the quality, traditional click pads. This laptop comes with a MagSafe connector, a USB 3.0 port, and an audio jack on the left, while on the right you'll have a Thunderbolt 2 port, a USB 3.0 port, and a full-size SD card slot. This laptop features a 1440x900 resolution display that looks pretty washed out, but does get bright enough for use under moderately lit environments. This laptop features an Intel Core i5 5250U with 1.6 GHz, an Intel HD Graphics 6000 GPU, which is integrated by the way, 8GB of DDR3 RAM, and 128 gigs of SSD storage. This is the base model for the MacBook Air line. Next up is the 13-inch MacBook Pro from 2015. This is a light productivity laptop that sustains all of the legacy ports most people will need. The exterior design is very similar to the MacBook Airs, except that this laptop is the same thickness uniformly. The plastic hinge and glowing Apple logo are still around for this model. The keyboard is very tactile. The keys bounce back very quickly after pressing them, which allows for quick boost in speed when typing. This laptop comes with a force touch trackpad, meaning that while the trackpad is a solid slab of glass that does not click downward, it produces haptic feedback in order to simulate a real click. You almost can't tell a difference between a traditional trackpad and this one, but this trackpad has the added benefits of detecting the amount of pressure applied to it for different gestures. On the right, you'll find a USB 3.0 port, an HDMI port, and a full-size SD card slot. While on the left, there's a MagSafe connector, two Thunderbolt 2 ports, one USB 3.0 port, and an audio jack. This laptop features a 2560x1600 resolution display that has held up very well to this day, with more realistic colors and such a bright panel. The specifications consist of an Intel Core i5-5257U processor, which is a dual-core CPU with 2.7GHz, Intel Iris Graphics 6100, 8GB of RAM, and 128GB of SSD storage. The 13-inch MacBook Pro weighs 3.5 pounds, which is a little heavier than most Ultrabooks, but it still isn't a problem carrying it around. The 13-inch MacBook Air, however, weighs just slightly over 2 pounds. The weight difference is surprisingly significant between these two. They both sound about the same in terms of sound quality. They both seem to get just as loud and seem to have the same amount of bass. Listen. Both of these deliver a great experience in terms of usability. I love being able to take the MacBook Air anywhere for typing and doing my schoolwork, but it all had to be indoors. The performance boost and better display of the MacBook Pro did make me much more productive, however. 
Photoshop work and the significantly brighter screen allowed for more work to be done, whether it was indoors or outdoors. The MacBook Air was almost unusable outside, though. I don't see a time where it's absolutely necessary to use your laptop outside, to be honest. They both offer the same typing and tracking experience, as well as sound quality. The battery life differences between these two is pretty significant, with the MacBook Pro was getting around 6 to 8 hours under normal use while the MacBook Air delivered around 10 hours under heavier use. If you're a light user, then the battery life on the MacBook Air will be ideal for you. In terms of performance, the MacBook Air fell short with its underclocked processor. Animations were a tad slower when compared to the MacBook Pro, though this performance loss does translate to the tests I performed with Adobe Photoshop and Premiere. The MacBook Pro did a much better job at handling these pieces of software, though either one would have performed even better if they had used Final Cut Pro instead of Premiere Pro thanks to the background rendering that you get with Final Cut. Performance in Photoshop felt about the same, though when it came to quick switching and pixel rendering after zooming in and out, the MacBook Pro performed considerably better. The brighter, higher resolution display from the MacBook Pro also contributed to a more accurate experience as I was able to follow any sort of work with near perfect color accuracy. The MacBook Air didn't fall short in terms of performance, but the lower resolution display made the experience significantly worse. Colors look washed out and things scale differently as a result. Performance in Adobe Premiere delivered decent results from both computers, but I look elsewhere for using Adobe software. For dual-core chips with no dedicated graphics, editing was smooth enough. Rendering still took a very long time, but the MacBook Pro still performed faster in rendering and exporting, but just not by that much. They both actually got warm to the touch when editing, but the MacBook Pro still managed to stay cooler than the MacBook Air. Now into the cons. The MacBook Air has a pretty annoying flaw being the display. Content consumption, content curation, any kind of gaming, etc. are not very enjoyable. It should all be handled in a place with low light. Also, because of its fanless design, there is nothing to cool this laptop unless you have an external cooling pad. This laptop is not made for intensive work anyway, so try to avoid that. The MacBook Pro does have one flaw, however, that being thermal throttling. It is definitely present, though it does have some fans to cool off the CPU. That's really it, though. Now, I've heard of an issue in regard to the anti-reflective coating on both MacBook models, staining the screen on these laptops. The stain gate effect, as they call it. I have never experienced this with any models that I've tested, and it does seem to be an isolated case. It's difficult for you to experience this issue, but if it ever happens, then immediately take it to the Apple Store. But it perhaps shouldn't affect your decision or confidence on whether you should go for either one of these devices. So in conclusion, the MacBook Air is the laptop for you if you are a light user who depends on good battery life. Someone who requires a solid experience for a lower price, assuming that you are looking into an Apple product, the MacBook Air will fulfill your needs. If you are more of a power user and do some graphic design or editing work, then the MacBook Pro will be ideal for you. The higher processing power will make a significant difference when doing more serious work, and the color accuracy with high resolution of the display are the most ideal for you. For more content, make sure to subscribe to our channel and to stay updated on our weekly videos, make sure to hit that bell and enable notifications. For links to both laptops as well as some suggestions for what to watch next, such as individual reviews for both laptops, expect to find those in the description. This has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you for watching and I will be seeing you all later. Enjoy.